Hi everyone, Dylan Gowan here. Welcome back to another installment of Overkill Reviews, Banger TV's weekly heavy metal review show. I'm back at the Banger Bar, and today I'm going to be reviewing one of the most anticipated releases within metal. Yeah, That has got to be one of the sickest grooves that I've heard all year. It's the new studio album by Ginger called Wallflowers, out today on Napalm Records. Ginger are arguably one of the most celebrated bands within metal today. Since the band's inception in 2009 in Donetsk, Ukraine, they continue to gain a lot of momentum with every release. The group is praised for their unique blend of combining progressive metal and groove metal that was evident in their first release, Cloud Factory, which gained a lot of attention, especially from major metal labels like Napalm Records, who signed the band and re-released Cloud Factory. Their sophomore album, King of Everything, is what really propelled them forward, especially the reaction community in YouTube. Their song, Pisces, was praised due to the sudden shift in dynamics and tones, which intrigued a lot of non-metal fans to latch onto Ginger as this kind of gateway band. And if Ginger's your first metal band that you listen to, and that's what starts your whole metal discovery journey, I think that's a really cool place to start. Last time I spoke about Ginger on the channel, it was during our 2019 What We Missed video. I remember Macro being a very solid release, I especially love tracks like On the Top, The Prophecy, Judgment and Punishment that kind of had similarities to a 12 Foot Ninja. Uh, by the way, if those two bands ever tour together, uh, take my money. Now, when the news came out that another full length album was in the works, I was really excited. It just shows that the band is like not wasting any time in between releases to put out new material. Uh, this band just continues to impress and I think they just deserve all the praise that they can get. The question that I had going into this album is, what steps have they made to improve their sound and how does this one compare to previous releases? Well, let's find out. After listening to this album, I can safely say this is perhaps Ginger's heaviest sounding album to date. It seems like they, during the lockdown, they had really more edge and aggression into their songwriting approach and it's beautifully demonstrated throughout Wallflowers. Their signature sound is still very much present throughout their album. It includes the heavy riffs, the dynamic shifts of mood, the furious drumming, uh, the occasional odd meter thrown in. Their sound, which is familiar to fans, has really matured and is really perfected on this release, which is evident right out of the gate with Call Me a Symbol, a chaotic track that immediately draws you in with a barrage of blast beats, a solid heavy groove, which is supported by a really awesome rhythmic vocal performance by Tatiana. My favorite part of their songs has to be the heavy emphasis on groove, which has leaned into more than in previous releases, getting more innovative with their songwriting. I especially love the shuffle and tribal inspired parts in Sleep of the Righteous. It's a really creative approach to their songwriting and a type of groove that I didn't think that they would include. Pearls and Swine is another great example and surprisingly has a lot of Opeth inspired parts embedded within it. And I know Opeth is a huge influence on the band, but those kind of subtle homages that they have to their influences, but they make it into their own way really is you know, kind of a creative approach that they're not being total copycats. Also, Copycat, by the way, just as a quick side note, is a freaking killer song on the record, totally chaotic. Jumping ahead a little bit in the album, I'd say Mediator is probably one of the best Ginger songs ever written. It just builds and builds and builds and has this really good intense moment before it says, stop, go. And just, just those subtle moments that just kind of keep you on edge, the way that each part is placed in that song is very unpredictable. But as much as I like Mediator, I still think that the best song on the album would have to be Vortex, a perfect example of why Ginger is one of the most celebrated bands within metal. The ethereal moments combined with the swaying vocal line and solid groove makes it a really appealing highlight. The progression of parts each has a purpose, even the heavy chugging riffs that they have placed along with the calm parts it really shows it's a perfect blend of the two sides of the band. And to cap it off with a 5-8 section with this heavy breakdown, it just leaves you saying, fuck yes. That breakdown part where it's the dotted eighth note section is freaking mint. It is so, so cool. Your prog brain just goes insane because of how simple it is, yet heavy it is, 
and how it's cleverly placed. Really, really love that part of that song. Despite the expressed aggression in this album, it really holds a lot of diversity of emotions in exploring heavy and personal topics. The title track, Wallflower, deals with the personal problems of consistently feeling isolated, being left behind, and having more introverted characteristics, something many of us can relate to, especially during COVID. The haunting guitar line and the anxiety and timidness in Tatiana's vocals really makes you relate to the character being portrayed within this song. Overall, it feels like the band have really perfected their sound, and while they're still trying to incorporate new elements, it keeps you guessing and it's very unpredictable. They're at a point in their career where they could just be recreating Pisces over and over again, and luckily they went the total opposite direction of that. Instead of going lighter to get more of a broader audience, they went much heavier and tried to really kind of hone in on the aggressiveness of this record. And the fact that the band didn't succumb to that pressure and went their own way is really commendable. There aren't any negative parts about this record. It's really good, but there is one song I didn't think was as strong as the others. Disclosure is a song that is performed very well, but I don't think it's as memorable as some of the others. It's very similar to a Deftones song, and I kind of lost interest in it despite the back half of it being significantly better. It's the only bump in the road. Other than that, it's smooth sailing. Overall, tone-wise, it's really good. All the instruments sound great, but that snare drum sometimes can be a little bit too pinging and dry. However, whatever tonal biases I have is quickly forgotten because his playing is very, very good throughout. Loved all the intricate parts he throws into all of Ginger's songs, how all of the various runs that he does for all the fills, the great grooves. He's just got really good pocket. So any tonal bias I have is overlooked very quickly because the songs are played very well. This is a very solid album by the band and if I was to compare this to Macro, I'd say that it's not as good as Macro. However, it is still a very enjoyable listen and easily in my top five best albums of 2021. Check back with me in a couple of months when the new 12 Foot Ninja, Archspire, Dream Theater records come out. But regardless of that, this is a great album and easily deserves a four and a half out of five skulls. All right, it's time for some shout outs. Shout outs. Here are a couple of awesome records that came out today. First up, this is an album I've been really looking forward to, which is Leprous with their new album, Aphelion, which comes out on Inside Out Music. Then we've got Cataclysm Side Project X Dio with The 13 Years of Nero, which comes out on Napalm Records as well. And finally, we have Canada's own Danko Jones with his new album, Power Trio, which came out on Sonic Onion today. So if you're a fan of Ginger and you haven't checked out these albums, I would encourage you to check them out. First up, I would recommend Textures with their record Silhouettes, which came out on Listenable Records. Next up, I would recommend 12 Foot Ninja Silent Machine, which came out back in 2012 on Volcanic Music. And that is easily one of my favorite uh, progressive metal albums of the 2010s. Next up, I would recommend the kings of Australian prog metal, which is Carnivool with their third album, Asymmetry, which came out on Density Records. And finally, I would recommend checking out The Agonists with their latest album, Orphans, which came out on Rodeo Star Records. The Agonist and Ginger have toured together, and that's just a perfect fit for both bands. So let me know what you guys think of Wallflowers in the comment section below. I very much enjoyed it. I recommend checking it out. And until then, guys, see you soon. Sweet.